This is the world's number one anchor. Did they really just say that? I mean, really. So that's right, Ultramarine have just labelled this thing the world's number one anchor. So that's the best anchor in the world. I mean, really? That is amazing, right? You know, if you're going to have that much confidence in your product, that's a pretty good thing. And these guys sent us this thing to be tested, long-term test, so we can send our thoughts to you. So we're not sponsored by them. We don't own this anchor and we don't get paid by them. In fact, they've been so good that they just said, look, take the anchor, tell the world what you think of it, and, you know, that's that, really. So that's easy going for us, isn't it, you know? But they got some confidence in it. Not only are they labelling this the world's number one anchor, they're also giving you a 60-day money-back guarantee. So that means that you can buy this, and you can go and test it and have some fun with it, drop the hook so to say wherever you might want and if it's not the best anchor you've ever used they'll take it back no questions asked that is something I've never even heard of with an anchor so can it be better than your second generation anchors can it be better than you know a Delta everyone loves a Delta right can it be better than a Spade, a Mantis, a Magnuson, and dare I say it, a Rockner? But Ultra seem to say that it is. And going into the whole Rockner debate, there's clearly on this anchor no roll bar. Now, we've heard things in the past where people say the roll bar can get caught in seaweed, or when it gets pulled into the sand, it aerates the sand, and you know it can lose some power or some hold, let's say. I'm not going to say if it does or it doesn't, that it is what it is you know unless I have one to test I, I can't tell you but the logic on this anchor is that this massive fluke which by the way it is massive is filled with lead and then the shank is hollow so we have gravity and we have buoyancy so now we don't need a roll bar because supposedly this thing cannot fall the wrong way up it's gonna, it's gonna be fun testing that one but We'll see if they're right. Moving on to what this has been made of, it's made of stainless steel. There's no galvanized steel option. And the reason there's no galvanized option is because you can't galvanize something which is A, full of lead, you'd have to put the lead in afterwards, and B, something which is hollow. So there never will be a galvanized version. Well, not that I could see possible anyway. She's made from 316L in the Fluke which is low carbon, it's the best for corrosion resistance and the likes. The shank is made from stronger material, with it being so a hollow oval structure as well, it gives enormous strength compared to just a normal shank, like a straight piece of flat bar out of the workshop, let's say. So that's good. I mean, ultra back the shank itself with a lifetime warranty against bending. So again, more confidence just oozing out of this company. It's quite a simple thing to look at, but it's not a simple thing at all. I mean, an anchor's an anchor, right? You throw it in the water, it gets stuck in the sand or the rocks or seaweed, whatever it is. I, it, I never realized that it could be possible to put this much engineering into an anchor, but they, they have, which is cool really cool we've got these wings so the idea of these wings is once she goes into the sand when the anchor wants to reset so turn 180 degrees with the shift of the wind let's say or the tide or maybe it's only 90 degrees the idea is that it pivots on the bottom here so right on the bottom of the anchor we've got this huge fulcrum and it will pivot on this and these wings 
are designed to allow it to spin on that fulcrum so it does not move much at all once it's resetting. The other advantage of this big fulcrum is as the anchor goes from in its set position like this when we come to release it it acts as a fulcrum to release it from the ground but of course that will only work when the chain is directly above it it's very clever the other cool thing they've got this bar so i mean engineering itself i mean to me one of the, the most important thing about engineering rules are is that <laughs> The more simple you can make it, the better it is. So in order to stop an anchor chain getting wrapped around the shank, you've got this bar. Seems so simple, which I suppose could be used as a tripping line if you wanted. And at the other end, really simple, simple eye through the end. Now that might well mean that you have to go with ultra swivel, which is another story. We'll be testing that in a later episode, but uh, yeah, first impressions are, you know, it's pretty impressive. I mean, look at this. That is one serious piece of kit. It's just wanting to dive in the whole time. And there's actually, there's a curve going this way as well. So when it lies down, all of the force is pressed on here through the lead. It's all trying to just push down onto this tip constantly trying to sink it down so first impressions you know this thing is a piece of kit it's I really like it I mean it's hard not to like it it looks cool right I really like it I can see it on the front of our boat no problem but it's all well and good liking it the question is how well does it work well for that you're gonna have to wait for the next episode this is just a first impressions and I can say that I'm pretty damn impressed with it so far but I can't wait to get it out into the water we're heading out soon and for those of you who've seen our last episode you'll know that we're on our way to the Balearics with this that's the first place we're going to go we're going to head there for a month or two basically check out this thing and um, see what she is like before we head off for longer passages gain a little bit of trust really so yeah out of season sailing Let's hope she's as good as they say. Eh? Right. Come on then.